Hi. <laughs> My name is Janae, and this is Junivy Studio. Do you consider yourself a perfectionist? And do you think that that's kind of like one of your greatest strengths? Um, because that's definitely how I felt about it. But now I see that it's time to throw my perfectionism in the garbage. Not really, not really. Because the truth is that my perfectionism was there to keep me safe from an, a everything, anything, any, any possible thing. They wanted to keep me safe from that. While intentions were good, what it did was create a huge amount of anxiety. Now, my battle with perfectionism started a really long time ago when I realized that it was linked to my social anxiety. So yeah, the ideas of perfectionism have been around for a while, right? But they were recently ignited by the painting and that, you know, sometimes it's okay to try again. It's okay to start over. It's okay to change your mind because all of those things in, you know, my little wormy brain, perfectionism says that those things aren't okay. It's not okay to change your mind. You're fickle. It's not okay to start over or it's not okay to give up. It's not okay to quit. It doesn't make any sense, right? The perfectionism is the driver in these anxious moments. And, and the reason that it's anxiety is because I can't deal with it right in that moment. Whatever the situation is that my brain is thinking of, I can't actually think of a solution to the problem because the problem is made up. The problem is in my head, meaning there probably is no problem. There's probably no problem. And even if there is a problem, it's not your job to like read people's minds. It's just not feasible. It's just not possible. So I need to stop doing that. <laughs> the painting sort of ignited that feeling. I had painted over those flowers. I had tried those flowers several times. Oh, and I just could not get a satisfying flower. Perfect is just an idea. And it's an idea that doesn't actually exist in the real way of things but that doesn't matter to a perfectionist because we still have our own ideas of what that perfect means. And it doesn't matter if we hit that idea because it always just like, perfectionism stays one step ahead of it. And it's like, well, it could have been, it could have been better still. It could have been better still. It still could have been a little bit better. And it's just like, shut up. And it was within the realm of me starting to feel like I wanted the consistency to be in my art making. Not just making art, but in the showing up of my studio, making the work, but also producing content and having this all develop a beautiful little flow. But I think what's making it harder is that I have very unattainable perfectionistic ideas about what it should be. And that's why it's leading to this kind of can't quite find the right way because I'm too busy trying to, just to find the right way. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> It's about showing up imperfectly because that's the only way to show up. It's the only way. Perfectionism is a lie. It's, a, it's a, an ideal that is unattainable. It's kind of like we're developing a language of consistency, of what that looks like and what it means and what it does for you because really it allows for things to progress. It allows for growth because without consistency, there is no growth. It is a daily habit and the consistency is what is key because momentum is built and skills are built up and it all compounds and makes it possible, makes it all possible and opportunities and you know, that's just life. So first things first, I got a new camera. It has a screen <laughs> that I can see, which is just, it's so good. It's so good. To practice consistency, I decided I was going to do a October art prompt challenge. I was gonna do Peachtober. The first prompt was cave, and I did not have any idea what to do. The only reason I ended up having an idea was because I had had a panic attack the night before. <laughs> and in the morning, I woke up with this image in my head of this long, dark cave inside of your head that feels so inescapable. That's kind of what it feels like to have a panic attack. 
the twisty, tangly part at the bottom was meant to symbolize how anxiety in your mind can turn into pain in the body. I think our body holds on to these things. Where the neck and skull meet, there's a dark and kind of fractured spot because this particular panic attack brought on a really horrible migraine. This was a very meaningful and healing piece for me. <laughs> Been a while since I've done something that therapy centered. Day two was dandelion. I have done a lot of dandelions recently, and for this prompt, I didn't want to do just the same dandelion kind of thing. So instead, I did this really cute little collection, <laughs> sort of like a little sample, a little sample shelf, taking samples of the natural world. I drew things from my studio that I have. I just loved that part about it. I loved it. I loved this one. The whole process was so magical and it was challenging too because it's not, you know, necessarily something that I draw all the time, but I really loved it. I really, really loved it. And an interesting thing about perfectionism and consistency that came up during these prompts was the realization that the art is actually better when it's just a little bit messier. Just not perfect. It gives it character and it gives it intrigue and, and texture and visual interest. So for a lot of these drawings, as I go through them, I was really approaching them with a sense of play and looseness and fun. I didn't want to get really bogged down in doing a super highly detailed image. And already this one did not pass that test because this one was very in-depth, but I had so much fun doing it. It was absolutely my favorite. Probably my favorite to actually work on because I was still, it was only day two, you know, you know. <laughs> Next one was cowboy, and immediately I thought of the boots, <laughs> the new boot goofing. So I wanted to do something with that. I thought it would be cute if they also had a matching hat to match their new boots. And uh, yeah, so then I drew a little frog. <laughs> I drew a little frog dude with his new boots and a little matching hat. So cute, I loved it. I enjoyed working on this one. The next day was tiger. And for this, I really, I wanted to try drawing a real tiger. So I took a reference image from unsplash.com, found a tiger and started, started drawing. I love how this one came out because it is all scribbles. It's just, it's, it's all scribbles. Every thing that I drew, except for the outline, the outline is the only thing that wasn't a scribble, but after that, all scribbles, all of it. <laughs> really fun working on this one. Day five was bow or bow. This was the first day of struggle. This was the first day where it really started to feel like a chore. I could not think of anything. So this is, this is what I came up with. I thought, you know, it's better to just do a little doodle, post it, show up for it. Here I am, here it is, goodbye. Day six was trees. And unfortunately, this also felt like a chore, which is silly because I love trees. I love painting trees, but I was so tired from work and from homework that it wasn't an enjoyable process. I did it and I finished it. I got lucky that I already had a drawing started that was about trees. So I just finished up the trees in that one and called it a day. I still like the way it came out. I definitely did not enjoy the process as much as I thought I was going to, which is a bummer, right? Day seven was potion. This was another one that I was very excited for and also very burnt out by. It took seven days for me to just be basically dreading it, but I did it and I liked it. I thought it came out really cute and I was proud of myself for showing up. Even though at this point I was really starting to second guess everything. Suddenly I was feeling like this was a really bad idea. I should have never tried to do another art challenge because I know that I'm not very good at art challenges and I give up and I was only on day seven. It started making me feel like, how can I be successful in anything that I do if I can't keep a simple promise to myself? And then I realized, oh no, hold on, wait a minute. This isn't a promise. This isn't a sacred vow to myself. No, this was a suggestion. This was a suggestion to try something new, to try practicing consistency. 
And it was a good practice because what it taught me is that consistency is really only good when it's consistently something you like. You should be consistently enjoying yourself. And if you're not, work towards something else because this isn't working. <laughs> and by day eight, I had officially fallen off the wagon. I did my homework, I went to work, and that was my day. And I came home completely exhausted and I did not draw that day. And I felt so horrible about it. I really felt like I had let everyone down. <sighs> I'd let myself down. No, it was fine. Because the next day, day nine, this was the day that I hung out with Mari for their birthday and it was such a fun time. We went on a little nature walk. We explored their garden and there was a little caterpillar. Oh my gosh, so cute. And then we did art things. And this is what I came up with during that time. I really loved this one. I think that out of all of them, this little cat in this little ghost costume is definitely a second favorite and one that I can definitely see myself creating stickers of in the future or something like that. By day 10, I was slightly more invigorated and I thought, I think I can do this still. It wasn't my favorite, but I thought it was cute. And then came day 11. I, at this point, was basically giving up. I did art, I did thumbnails for a commission that I'm gonna have at the beginning of the year, which I'm really excited about. Uh, but that's the only art I did that day and having it be linked with the fact that I was doing work for my field. I was doing the work of my field, in my, in my field. I was working in my field. <laughs> I know that it works technically, but it felt like a stretch and I wasn't mad about it. I was just, at this point I was done. By day 12, I did not do anything and I gave up, I stopped it. So all in all, it was a really fun little process. It was a really fun little, wanted to try an art challenge, got to day 11 sort of, and that was good, that was enough. That was enough for me, I got my dose. I did it to practice consistency and even though I didn't finish, in the end I still feel like I learned a lot about myself, I learned a lot about what consistently showing up looks like for me, or maybe what it doesn't look like <laughs> because I, I'm still working on what it actually looks like. I realized that taking care of myself is vitally important because of the way consistency builds up on itself and compounds the efforts and progresses and grows. It makes it so that even a very small effort towards something every day gets you way more results than trying to do things really, really well. My perfectionism has been soothed or kind of quieted because my goals have changed. It still pops up, don't get me wrong. It's still there trying to make noise, but mostly I just fight it with logic and say, that's not the goal. The goal isn't X, Y, Z. The goal is just to show up. So perfectionism sits back and it's just like, okay, well, it's your life, I guess. <laughs> and the interesting part about that is that my drive for excellence hasn't gone anywhere. It's still there and it's still a healthy part of showing up in the world, wanting to be good at things, wanting to do things well and, and offer my best work because that's just me. That's what I like. I enjoy doing that. So if you're a perfectionist and you're thinking that there's no way you could let go of that perfectionism because who knows what would come of it, I'm here to tell you that it's gonna be okay. You can let that go. You can soothe and redirect and make sure it knows that it's gonna be okay. All you have to do is show up and showing up imperfectly is really tough. It's challenging, it's courageous, and it's totally worth it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.